Thank you. Um, so it appears that you wait ages for a debate on HPMAs and then two come along in very quick succession. Can I start by again thanking those who took part in last night's uh, debate led by my colleague uh, Beatrice Wishart. I, I think it sent the most unambiguous message about the strength of cross-party opposition to the government's proposed approach on HPMAs. This is merely a reflection, of course, of the anger and, in some cases, fury felt in island and coastal communities the length and breadth of Scotland. So it's right we return to this subject again today, and I thank Rachel uh, Hamilton for allowing us to do so. The government's amendment, sadly, is a rather predictable and vintage example of what a I mean, Brexit continues to cause great damage. UK Tory government policies on skilled worker visas are indefensible. But as Elspeth Macdonald of the Scottish Fishermen's Federation has made clear, whatever issues the industry has with Brexit and labour rules, these pale into insignificance if fishermen are banned from fishing. The topic of the debate um, today is the same as last night, but the cast list looks a little different. Much like the HPMA designation, those operating arguments uh, felt to be damaging uh, or potentially damaging to the Butte House Agreement are to be arbitrarily excluded. So it is that Fergus Ewing and Kate Forbes find themselves confined to port by the SNP Whips Office. Yet, appropriately, there's no evidence this forced tie-up regime will provide any sort of protection for the SNP Green Government's policy on HPMAs, particularly when assurances that were previously offered up by the First Minister and Cabinet Secretary are already being redefined and diluted. Hamza Youssef could not have been clearer in stating he would not impose these policies on communities that don't want them, a promise echoed by the Cabinet Secretary. Now we're told there needs to be, quote, vehement opposition, whatever that means. Presiding officer, the lack of any prior discussion or consultation with stakeholders in the fishing, aquaculture and other key sectors most directly affected is inexcusable. It has seen government policy developed, I don't have time, I'm afraid, Mr. Whittle, developed and consulted on over years, upended and replaced by closed door negotiations in Butte House between the SNP and Greens. That's not evidence based policy making. It's not ministers being inclusive or accessible. And it makes a mockery of any commitment this government professes to genuine island proofing, a point made in my amendment, which I move. And damage is already being done, as Rhoda Grant said, through heightened uncertainty and a collapse in confidence. Reaching agreement on measures that might actually help protect our marine environment have been made more difficult to achieve. And the government's handbrake turn undermines those in the fishing sector already leading efforts to manage, protect and enhance stocks and biodiversity. In my own Orkney con uh, constituencies, fishers recognise their sector relies on healthy ecosystems and environment. They've been working in partnership with academics, environmental groups on a range of projects, tagging brown crab, trialling technology in creels to measure environmental variables such as salinity, temperature, light and current, using cameras to understand interactions of creels with the seabed, recording sightings of cetaceans and seabirds, carrying out a carbon audit of Orkney's fleet, precisely what we would want to see in the interests of our fishing sector, the marine environment, and our island and coastal communities. But, President Officer, let me finish with the words of Hannah Fennell of Orkney Fisheries Association, who told me earlier this week, and I quote, HPMAs undermine the concept of environmental stewardship. Instead of punishing those who live near and work in the marine environment, the government should be empowering communities and fishers. The knowledge fishers hold should be seen as an asset and part of the solution to the twin climate crises. I could not agree more. Thank you.